And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a new expansion for Marvel Legendary, and y'all know I really like that game, and I'm assuming if you're watching this review, so do you. So this is Heroes of Asgard, which... Thor and Buddies, basically. Um, I was actually, this is again one of those expansions when it came out, I thought, huh, they haven't done that already? I mean, Thor's in the game, but it is neat to see this. And of course, I like the Thor comic books. I like the Thor movies. I like the Asgard world, uh, even though it sometimes feels like it's, yeah, well, it is a different section of the Marvel Universe. So it's neat to see this stuff at it. It adds throne artifacts, being worthy or not, and more. Here's what's in the box. All right, let's take a look at the cards in this set. First of all, we have Thor. This is not the first time that Thor has been in this game, but of course, how could you not have him in here? Now, he has a new keyword here called worthy. Worthy is, well, of course, I mean, you have to be worthy to lift uh, his hammer, but you basically are worthy if you have a hero that costs five. So for example, if this card is in my hand, or one that I played, then I'm worthy that turn. It's kind of a weird thematic reasoning for that, but you'll see this one here is two money, but if you're worthy, you also get two attack for it. And then this one's three attack, but it's plus one for each other card you played this turn that makes you worthy. So if you have two Divine Lightnings, you have a total of eight attack, which is pretty powerful. Um, here we have the Royal Decree. Uh, if you played another Thor card, each player who's worthy draws a card. Each villain that isn't worth at least five victory points gets minus one this turn. So that's pretty cool. It works around this worthy thing, and the worthy principle works fine. Then we do have Thor's hammer here. This is an artifact. Now, artifacts have been in the game before, but if you've never seen them, essentially an artifact, when you play it, stays in front of you. It's not discarded at the end of a round. These are now thrown artifacts, which means you can then discard them in the future to get a bonus. Like here, when you throw this, you get plus three attack, then you get plus one for each of the technology or the whatever the blue hero is that you played this turn. So that's pretty cool, and I like the idea. It's very thematic. Uh, the rule book says it's the most famous thrown artifact in the Marvel Universe. I might argue that Captain America's shield is more so. Beta Ray Bill, yay! Unfortunately, as much as I like Beta Ray Bill, his character here, this card, you to play this, you have to discard a card for two money, and then if you if then if you're worthy, draw a card. It only costs one, but nah. Here you can discard a card if you do draw a card. Great. Then he has his own throwable weapon, Stormbreaker, and you can't throw it unless you're worthy. And then his thing is discard a card, then count the number of cards you discarded from your hand this turn and draw that many cards. That's cool. He's all about cycling through your deck. Just doesn't feel like the actual character, like Beta Ray Bill, who is a character I really enjoy. Then we have Valkyrie with some really cool cards, artwork. I like this one. And another thrown artifact here. When you throw this, you get Sewers Conqueror 2. And here she has Rooftops Conqueror 1. That means if there is an enemy in those spots, you get plus one attack. So when you throw this, you get a plus two attack if there's an enemy in the sewers. And here it's two attack, but it's three if there's an enemy in the rooftop. And here you have a Bridge Conqueror 1. And here the big one is Street Conqueror 1. I actually am not a huge fan of Valkyrie. Not the character. I think the character's great. Um, but these cards, this Conqueror, it's very situational, I feel. And so you can make it work, but it's, eh, it's okay. Then we have the Warriors 3. And here's two of the Warriors, three. Um, and these, this one lets you KO a card from your hand or discard pile. This you can move a villain around. He has Bridge Conqueror 1, but possibly Bridge Conqueror 3, so this could be a 7 attack. And then this one says if you played at least three other non-gray heroes with different card names this turn, you get plus 3 attack. They're very straightforward. Again, I don't know that I love the, this character, but I, there's, in the comics they're some of my favorite, especially Volstagg. Then we have Lady Sith. She has a throne artifact here. When you throw this, get plus one and plus one. And then she has this winged helm, which is awesome, because not only can you throw it to get plus one attack, but if you're about to take a wound, you can throw it to avoid the wound. And then she has this really huge thrown one here. When you throw this, you get plus four attack and KO a card from your hand or discard pile. So that's three thrown artifacts. 
And then she has this card, it's Weapons Master. If you control any artifacts, you get plus two. She's all about the weapons and stuff. I really like this character. She's my favorite of the heroes from this set. Now let's take a look at the villains. We have the Omens of Ragnarok. These also have Conqueror, which means if there's a villain in that spot, it makes them more powerful, which makes this world guy super powerful because he's plus one if you have in any of those five spots. Um, but he does make heroes cost one less when you fight him, so there's that. Then there's the Fenris Wolf, which I guess was news to me because I thought it was just called Fenris, but eh. Um, and then we have Sulfur, Solter, the Fire Giant King, who I really thought they were going to make a mastermind, but either way, what I like about him is if you defeat him, he becomes an artifact for the hero. So once per turn, you get Sewers Conqueror 1. That's kind of cool. Not only that, you have the Hell Crown here, which once per turn, you get Streets Conqueror 1. And once per turn, this with the Eternal Flame, you can return a zero cost card from your discard pile to your hand. And then the Casket of Ancient Winters. Once per turn, if you're worthy, you get plus two money. Now, notice these are villainous weapons, though. So these are cool that you can get these as artifacts. But a villainous weapon, when it comes out, it goes to the first villain, which is going to give them this extra attack. If that villain escapes the city, this weapon then goes to the mastermind. So these are cool that they turn into artifacts, and I like them for that reason, but they're really dangerous while they're out there. We also have the Dark Council, who is a little bit more straightforward, just different things. They, this one here, the Fire Giant Queen, says if you're worthy, you get plus two money when you fight them. And then he gets plus two attack if you're not worthy. So that's kind of interesting. I like that idea. Um, here's another villainous weapon that becomes a throne artifact that you can get, so that's cool. Now, there are two masterminds in this set. We have Malekith the Accursed, who's a much more nasty and dangerous guy in the comics than he was in the movie. Uh, and he there, he's all about getting villainous weapons and such. And then there is, of course, Hela, no surprise there. And her strikes become enemies that you have to fight. And that's a pretty cool idea. And she's also Bridge Conqueror 5, Street Conqueror 5. In fact, both of these have a, as all Masterminds now an upgraded one. And this one's just nasty. I don't even know how you're supposed to beat them. Then there's also some schemes. The schemes are okay. This one's a little convoluted, I think, where you have, you know, there's villains. And then there's these virtual people that are guardians of things. But I do like the test of worth. Because if you're not worthy, this is all about buying expensive cards so that you can stop them so that you're worthy. And then the War of the Frost Giants have the twists come in as Frost Giants that you can fight. So I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, that's what's in this set. This is the Solid Expansion, the Heroes of Asgard. It adds, you know, you're, if, if you like this theme, of course you're going to get it. You know, if you like Thor, Beta Ray Bell, and uh, the Heroes 3, and Lady Sif. Um, Sif, I'm sorry, Lady Sif. I, I like these characters. I like the villains. They made sense. The masterminds and such. I like the enemies that turn into artifacts. So it's a pretty solid expansion. Now, there was nothing necessarily mind-blowing about it. And like I said, the worthy, the rules were like, well, this is, you know, the choice you make is just like the choice they had to make in the comic. I was like, all right, nice try. But yeah, I don't see any thematic... Being a more expensive doesn't necessarily correlate with being worthy. Because there are Deadpool cards that are expensive. I would not necessarily consider Deadpool to be worthy. But whatever. It's a new mechanism. And it works fine. So who would I recommend this to? Well, you're watching this, so you know you're going to get it. And secondly, if you tend to like the Thor part of the universe, this is a good expansion. Lots of fun. Heroes of Asgard. Dice Tower Judgment approved.